Hey, what's up everyone? The one and only here and I'm so glad to see you back on my channel. Today, I have a very exciting video for you all. It's in regards to the new MacBook Pro. I made a small poll the other day and it seemed the majority of you guys are most excited about MacBooks as potential holiday gifts this holiday season. Today, what we're going to look at is test the previous 15 inch MacBook's battery versus the 16 inch MacBook Pro's battery. Apple claims the new MacBook Pro 16 inch lasts a whole extra hour, but how accurate are those claims? Would you throw away your old MacBook Pro for more battery life? How long will both of these machines last after powering? through several everyday tasks. Does that extra inch of screen real estate really make a difference to battery? Ladies, does an extra inch matter to you? All of these questions, okay, maybe not all of them, but most of these questions will be answered and more. So what are we waiting for? Let's go. Okay, before I start, I do have to preface some information, as always, before my battery drain test. I'm sorry, but I just have to say it. I decided not to do any performance tests like benchmarking or exporting videos, since I plan to do separate videos for speed tests and performance tests later on. In essence, almost all of the tasks performed for this test are everyday tasks that aren't too heavy on processing power. Things like web surfing all the things the majority of us will be doing a good portion of the time. So I decided to only do tasks I deem to be things an average person would do since not everybody uses Final Cut, Premiere, or Photoshop. But if you want to see how this new MacBook compares to a fully spec 16 inch MacBook Pro, how it compares to the previous versions performance wise and more, then exit your full screen and click that red subscribe button and ring the bell notification so that you never miss any of my future content. Last thing, very quickly, the 15 inch MacBook Pro had a physical battery size of 83.6 milliamp hours, while the new 16 inch MacBook Pro has a 100 milliamp hour battery. Both are rechargeable lithium polymer batteries that allow your MacBook to last you until the long hours of the night while you study, edit, play, or work away. I'll list the specs of each machine on the screen right now, but again, for this battery test, Specs should not be a huge factor as none of the tests performed will be graphically intensive nor heavy on the processor. Okay, enough with the introductions. You know what it is. Silver 15 inch MacBook Pro on the left and space gray new 16 inch model on the right. Let's get to it. Of course, with a bigger battery, usually you get a bigger chassis, which in turn normally is accompanied by a bigger display. But because we have a bigger display, this means the computer will now have to draw more power to illuminate the extra screen real estate as compared to a smaller display. Apple was able to fit a dramatically bigger battery with a much bigger battery to screen ratio as compared to the previous generation. So let's just get to the test and see if those claims hold up. Battery brightness was turned to 70% on both. True tone has been disabled. Both both hooked up to the same Wi-Fi network and auto lock set to never just to name a few of the important settings. The battery cycle on the 15 inch is also under 50 cycles, well under the 1000 cycles Apple recommends to switch the battery. Once your MacBook hits about 1000 cycles, you'll start to see a sharp decrease in performance and battery life. Because the cycle count is minuscule and literally zero on the 16 inch, this test is not conflicting and is as fair comparison as it can get. I was very meticulous in making this as fair and as consistent as I could, as one setting being slightly altered could dramatically change how the battery will last. First, I decided to airdrop several videos on both MacBooks simultaneously. If you don't know about airdrop yet, man you're missing out. You can easily share dank memes, important videos to save and cherish forever, or maybe your girl is being a bit courteous and wants to share certain pictures with you if you know what I mean. It can all be done in the blink of an eye with airdrop. So anyway, after about 10 minutes of airdropping onto both computers, to my surprise, the 15 inch MacBook Pro remained at 100% battery and didn't break a sweat, while the 16 inch MacBook Pro obviously didn't stretch before coming into this competition as it dropped to 97%. What are you guys' predictions? Do you think Apple is full of BS? Do you think the difference in battery is negligible? Pause this video right now and comment down your predicted winner and at what time you think it'll die. Moving right along, next, I Netflixed and chilled by myself as it was a cold rainy day. I was gonna go to the gym, but instead I was being lazy. It was a Sunday when I did this test and well, I presume a lot of people spend on average about this much time, whether it be on Netflix, Hulu, Disney Plus, but definitely not Apple TV Plus since most of the stuff on there is trash. 
for now. But anyway, we had Netflix up and running for about two and a half hours straight and arrived at the following percentages. The 15 inch MacBook Pro dropped to 61% and the 16 inch regained its momentum. The hype is on its side. It dropped to just 66%. Not bad for two and a half hours on Netflix. Next up, I re-downloaded Apple's suite of professional applications to both MacBooks simultaneously. This entails Final Cut Pro, Logic Pro, Motion, and Compressor. These four apps together are about 7 to 8 gigabytes in size, and I noticed that while downloading, the fans really kicked up on the 15 inch. This is a problem the Butterfly Keyboard MacBooks have. The chassis on the Butterfly MacBooks was slim, but at the detriment of thermal throttling. This happens when the body, or most importantly, the internals like the processor, get too hot and therefore have to slow down to dissipate heat or risk the internals getting damaged because of the scorching heat. It's like when you click on that big green button that says, you just won $10,000, click here to claim your prize. Next thing you know, your MacBook burns your lap with first degree burns and now your laptop commits suicide because of all the viruses, or as I like to call them, internet STDs. Anyway, we got a little sidetracked. Third test, right. Download the pro apps. It honestly didn't take as long as I thought, but after all four apps downloaded and installed, the 15 inch sits at a reasonably healthy 52%, while the 16 inch not letting go of its lead at a respectable 58%. After that, I emulated a FaceTime call by opening up Photo Booth and record on the pathetic 720p camera for about 30 minutes. I normally don't FaceTime or use the camera for that fact, however, I do know that some people FaceTime like all the time just to spill some tea or use Skype. Despite how horrible this camera is, it is passable, but don't expect any of the optics of the new iPhone 11 Pro to be on here. But once I hit the stop button to stop recording, we arrived at the following figures. MacBook 15 inch now sits at 35%, while the 16 inch gets a bigger lead now dropping to 46%. So the 16 inch is ahead by a whole 11%. How do you think the computers are holding up? Is this what you were expecting? 11% is a sizable difference, but we're not stopping here. The computers have to die for this test to officially come to an end. Our next test was something we all are very used to. After all, the primary reason most people buy a computer is to browse the web and to be able to switch effortlessly and seamlessly between tabs. I fall into the category of people who have about 10 tabs open at a time, but there are also people who only have about one or two tabs open at once. I went right down the middle and opened five Safari tabs. Yes, it is true. The more tabs you open, the more RAM that is being consumed, which, in a severe case with 25 tabs open at once, for example, could have a much more obvious effect on battery. But we went the average person route with 5 for now. After 45 minutes on Safari, the 15-inch MacBook Pro sits at 29%, while the 16-inch now drops to 39, still 10 percentage points away. Now we did the same test, same websites, same amount of time, except one of our variables now, switching to using Chrome, which notoriously consumes much more power as compared to Safari. This is likely because Safari is Apple's in-house web browser and is thus way more optimized for Apple devices, and I mean that makes sense. I, however, much like most people, prefer Chrome just because of its fluidity, features, and ease of use. After 45 minutes with the same 5 tabs open on Chrome, the 15-inch MacBook Pro now took a big beating, just as I predicted, and dropped to 14%, while the 16-inch, just like the smaller variant, also took an L and dropped down to 23%. So after more than 5.5 hours, both laptops are still holding up. Pretty impressive, especially for laptops with such crisp and vivid displays. We're nearing the end and still seeing some some interesting results. At this point during testing, my mind and body start to slowly shut down as it gets into the later hours of the night. If you're finding this video useful, drop a fat like on this video as this testing is extremely tedious and interferes greatly with my day. It's like babysitting man, like my girlfriend can be like, hey Starbucks date, can't, MacBook battery drain test, my cousin, yo let's go hit some weights, can't now but at 3 I have a 2 hour window. You see what I mean? Feel free to watch my playlist of other battery drain tests. They're just as useful and informative as this one. But anyway, I pretended to take notes on it as if it were a classroom or seminar to mimic real world use of taking notes, whether it be on the notes app, word or any other platform you use your MacBook to jot down some notes. I felt like a cat man and normally I like my sleep and am super grumpy if awoken but again, it is all in the name of science and for you guys as well so you can be just as informed. I take a 5 minute nap, type, 7 minute nap, type, 4 minute nap, 
snooze another five minutes, snooze again, type, etc. After about 35 minutes, we arrive at the following figures. The 15 inch on its last legs at 10%, while the mighty 16 inch down to slightly less than a fifth of battery, clocking in at 19%. This is it guys, let's finish this. I'm sleepy, I work the next day, let's get it over with. Cue YouTube as for the last test, I had both computers playing in full screen on YouTube, just looping some of my playlists until they both died. Was your prediction close? Did they perform to your expectations? Did Apple hold up to their claim? All I can say is, kind of, but we'll unwrap and discuss at the end. The 15 inch did the best they could but finally tapped out at 6 hours and 45 minutes into this test, much less than the 10 hour battery they advertised. So did the 16 inch last 7 hours and 45 minutes as advertised? Not quite. The 16 inch finally met its fate at 7 hours and 4 minutes, lasting only 19 minutes more as compared to the 15 inch. But wait, this reminds me of when you beat Captain K. Rule on Donkey Kong Country 1. The credits start rolling and you think it's over, but wait, what is going on? This ain't The Walking Dead. These computers aren't The Undertaker from WWE. I woke up a little confused minutes later to check on them and saw both screens dark, but for some reason, I tried messing with them and they were revived. Both of them. Can you believe it? Somehow, both turned back on, so what did I do? I continued my testing. The 15 inch lasted a couple minutes more only. It was truly out of juice, so technically bringing its final time to 6 hours and 47 minutes. While the 16 inch powered through, swung back, trained harder, cause it lasted an extra 12 minutes. Technically bringing its total time to 7 hours and 16 minutes. Technically lasting 29 minutes more than the 15 inch. You guys give it up for our two contestants. So what have we learned today? Well, this test was quite interesting. First off, Apple claims these two laptops will last you 10 hours of wireless web browsing or 11 hours on the 15 inch and 16 inch respectively. Obviously that wasn't the case, but it may have been due to several factors. For example, the 70% brightness. Most people don't have their MacBooks on that bright. I typically have mine set to about 40% most of the time, unless I'm editing on Final Cut, in which case I plug it up to power and crank the brightness up to 100%, giving me the flexibility of editing anywhere I want so long as there is a wall plug and not being confined to my desk at my studio. Another reason could quite simply be just having the displays on 100% of the time from when the testing started. That could cause some strain on the processor and could heat up the systems after being on for that long. And that's with doing nothing graphically intensive. Crank up Fortnite or create some tunes on Logic Pro and that battery life will be hit considerably harder depending on what configuration you have. In any case, browsing the web is what I do 70% of the time, while most other people might web surf 90% of the time and reserve that power for the other 10% of their workflow. In any case, the battery life certainly isn't bad for a portable computer of this caliber, but could be better. One thing is for sure though, the 16 inch definitely lasts longer and you'll likely squeeze more juice out of it by dimming that display and having more power saving settings toggle on. Well guys, that's been it. I hope you found this fun battery test useful. Don't forget to comment, rate, subscribe, and I'll catch you all in my next video. Peace.